Hey, uh, good evening. Thanks for tuning in to Go Have Fun. This is going to be a series of chats uh, with fitness experts that we'll do for the next six, five, six weeks. Um, yeah, just from a refereeing perspective, this is something that uh, the Referee and Laws Committee Referee Development Working Group, um, this is something that they came up with. Uh, my name's Haley Slaughter. I'm from Florida, um, and I've been working with the Referee Development Working Group. Um, and we're all just trying to get everybody together with this Fit Ref Raffle. And um, thank you so much for your participation. So far, it's it's really kind of blown us away. We didn't know we would get some attraction. And um, so keep keep doing your submissions. Um, tonight's drawings will be for a Stars and Stripes jersey signed by the women's national team, uh, a bag of Gilbert rugby balls, and a world rugby referee jersey. So we'll do that at the end. Um, and also I just wanted to say, uh, yeah, keep posting your workouts, pictures of you when you're exhausted, all that stuff. Tag it, uh, tag USA Rugby with the little at, you know, and then fit ref raffle with the hashtag. So uh, with that, we're going to start. Uh, tonight we're gonna talk about flexibility and injury prevention, how they go together. And tonight our expert is almost Dr. Katie Hunzinger. Welcome Katie. <laughs> Thanks, Haley. Yeah, so you're at the University of Delaware, and uh, what's your dissertation on exactly? Yeah, so uh, to be determined the full title, but my current uh, study is actually called Scrum because it's a rugby pun. So it's uh, sub-concussive uh, sub -concussive impact in rugby union players. So kind of a, a rugby union member. So you kind of have to work the letters around, but it is Scrum. So basically looking at concussion and subsequent musculoskeletal injury in rugby players and then just the effect of chronic repetitive head impacts on balance and postural control and cognitive function and hopefully we find that rugby players do okay <laughs> and we make rugby look good but we'll see <laughs> well great it's good somebody needs to be studying that right so um how did you come to uh rugby i know that you've refereed um where where have you refereed here in the states before yeah, so I uh, started with uh, SIRS, uh, Southeast Referees within uh, North Carolina. Actually, I can give a shout out to uh, Neutro, Nikki Edgecombe uh, from Chicago, Referees Carfu, and the team of four out there. Um, I got in a bad car wreck and got a bad post-concussion syndrome. I was symptomatic for nine months. And she, I texted her and I was like, I can't play rugby anymore. What do I do? And she was like, go get your ref cert. Go get it now. Got it and have since been refing since 2016. And now I ref with East Penn referees um, up here in Delaware. Oh, that's so great. Well, it's good to have, you know, one of us here on the show with everybody. So um, let's talk about, um, you know, we're all just kind of jumping off of the couch, right? For the most part, some people were able to, it was just a year ago, Right now, I think we were blissfully unaware of what was about to happen, right? So everybody's, whoa, this is the spring season. And then, yeah, one year anniversary of a two week shot down to flatten the curve. Pretty much. So um, some people were allowed to leave their homes. Um, I was able to do some running. Uh, there are some people who, you know, just let themselves go, screw it, rugby's, you know, not going to be back for a while. And now we really don't know um, when everyone's going to be coming back together. So, um, when we're jumping off the couch, we don't exactly know what we're, um, you know, we don't have a, a clear cut goal. Like I don't have a game on Saturday, but I want to work out because I want to win something on the fit ref raffle. Uh, what should I do before I start, you know, go running a 10 K. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a reason, right. That there's like a trademark program couch to 5k. Um, and it's exactly that. I, I, I use a car al analogy a lot, right? So, um, you know, we've been on the couch, right? Or maybe my gym's been closed due to my state or county or even city regulations. So, you know, if my car was shut down, covers on it, it's in the garage for a year, you know, the oil's just been sitting there, gasoline's been sitting there, it's a, you know, 68 Chevy, whatever. Am I going to just turn on that car? and go drive it on the highway like I did last year? Probably not, right? I'm probably gonna get the fluids checked and put air in the tires, um, 
you know, make sure that it's ready to go. It probably needs an oil change. So it's going to be the same concept. You know, your body is just this magnificent, well-integrated machine th through many systems, ventilatory, cardiovascular, circulatory. And so it's going to be the same concept. So I think the biggest thing really as referees and just as former rugby players, right, we're only slightly competitive, is that we have to have humility and be humble and that's really, really tough, right? It's, it's, you have to treat it like you're coming off an injury. And so, you know, normally in season with refereeing, we used to go for a 5K jog and that was no problem. And we could run it at an eight minute pace for, you know, 25 minutes or whatever. And so we're coming off that couch, you know, so maybe that 5K at an eight minute pace isn't going to be great. So maybe we need to start at a one mile run, you know, for day one at a 10 minute pace or something just kind of, what can I do that's going to be within reason and then slowly progress it? So it's the same thing. We're not going pedal to the metal. We're not starting that car up cold. And we're getting our body used to um, just that tension and that loading all over again, right? You know, we've all had that big tournament when, you know, or like that first game back, even when you think you've been working out and it just wrecks you, right? And so this is how you try to prevent it. It's just being smart. And you kind of said, like, you know, you don't have that goal to work for. And that's kind of going to be another thing that's going to help is just setting a simple goal. So, you know, by the end of the month, I want to be able to log X, Y, Z number of miles, or I want to have this many steps in a day or work out, be physically active for 30 minutes a day. And so just kind of having those goals are just going to save your face and give you something measurable to work for and track your progress. Okay. So I like how you mentioned humility because I feel like some of us are a little proud about warming up. I feel like some of us are just like, meh, refs don't warm up, refs don't stretch. What's wrong with you? Why do you stretch so much? I used to hear that a lot. So warming, like, please tell us the importance of a warm up before anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in refing and just in general, right? So going back to my car analogy, unfortunately, you'll hear this a lot tonight. Um, same thing, right? You wouldn't go pedal to the metal zero to 65 on the highway, right? There's a reason that there's an on-ramp, you know, we, we slowly build up to speed. And so it's going to be the same concept with our bodies, right? We want to slowly get our heart rate up. We want to increase our respiration rate, increase that body temperature, get those muscles ready for loading um, so that we're not putting ourselves in a place to be injured, same like the car. We're not blowing up the car's engine. And so, and then also from like a referee perspective, it's also professionalism, right? You know, so you're showing up to a match, you know, I'm driving to Philadelphia on Saturday for a match or what have you, you know, first off, I'm going to show up, you know, an hour, hour and a half early. So now that the players know the refs here, you know, <laughs> one, they know they have a ref and now you're on time or if not early. So you look squared away. So now they have you know, you've gone up a peg in their opinion and they see you referee, they see you warming up. So now all of a sudden they're like, okay, the referee has their, you know, their stuff together. So they value this game as much as we do, you know, as a player, if you see a referee roll up five minutes before the match, you know, sandals on, you're like, great, this guy, this gal, this human is not ready. We're going to run all over them, you know? And so you need to treat it as much as you would treat it as a player too, you know, just because you're no longer a player, you're running just as much, if not more than the players. So in theory, you should be as physically active as you were when you were a player. Right. Oh, that's a really good point. Um, so we, I've heard now they're kind of saying the cool down is just as important or maybe more important than the warm up. Can you explain that to me? Everybody yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's the same concept, right? We've all seen that person at the gym, right? They're running on the treadmill and you see that, that counter tick and they hit two miles on the dot or 20 minutes on the dot and they hit stop, right? And then they just get yeah. off the treadmill, clean it off and say, let's go. Um, same thing with the car analogy. There's a reason there's an exit ramp. We wouldn't just slam on our brakes at 60 miles an hour. You're going to probably cause an accident. You're going to blow out your brake pads, ruin your tire, wear down your tires a lot quicker. And so it's the same concept, right? So my background's in cardiac rehab. And uh, the way I try to tell people is, you know, in cardiac rehab, what we do when we do a cardiac stress test is we get you up to your maximum point of exertion and then we stop you and we have you lay on a table and we look at your heart rhythm. And 
when we stop you and have you lay down, and so you went from 100 to zero, that's typically when we're going to see a cardiac abnormality. We're going to see, you know, an arrhythmia occur. And I'm not saying that's going to happen in a 20-year-old or, a, you know, a 30-year-old referee, but it's the same concept that we've induced this high level of stress. Your, your blood pressure is high, your respiration rate's high, your heart rate's high. All these things are all the way up here. Exactly. You're mentally aroused. And now to just slam that brakes, is just not going to be good. So same thing. We want to slowly bring that heart rate down in a controlled manner. We want to bring that temperature down. And that's going to be the great time to actually do that static stretching is during that cool down. When those muscles are warm, we're ready to get them used to that new elongated length that they're in and um, keep our body active so that we're not just slamming on the brakes and just preparing ourselves for the next injury. <laughs> Right. So you're talking about like, so dynamic stretching for the warm up and static stretching for the cool down. That's easy enough. To yeah, remember. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, go ahead. Well, I was just going to kind of pivot, um, but say what you were going to say. Oh, no, please, please, please go ahead. It's already well, gone. Just talking about, uh, flexibility. Um, like I've heard Novak Djokovic, he's a tennis player. I've heard he stretches three hours a day. So, and I know, you know, how does, how does flexibility enhance performance for us? Yeah, so that's kind of like a loaded question. And unfortunately, like most things in physiology, right, it depends. And I hate giving that answer because it sounds like a cop-out. That's a referee answer. And it's okay. Yeah, right, right. Just, yeah, yeah. Is, is this all sides? Well, it depends. Is this a high tackle? Yeah, it depends. It's so true. That's why it's called laws. Yeah, so maybe laws of the human body. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it's tough, right? You know, like everyone wants a nice media story like Novak, you know, who knows if he's actually stretching three hours a day. You know, I went to school with a guy that plays in the NFL and they say, oh, he never ate breakfast and he never lifted weights before college. And I know that's a lie, but, you know, it makes a great story. <laughs> and, um, you know, so there's a big difference between, you know, is he stretching or is he mobilizing, right? And so flexibility is really that active, I'm sorry, flexibility is really that passive range of motion. Mm -hmm. um, so we can lengthen passively, whereas mobility is that active range of motion. And we can improve this with, you know, passive techniques like using tissue mobilization tools, you know, getting that lacrosse ball, that theracane, um, that um, foam roller. We can do some, you know, active mobility movement. So moving that joint and muscle actively through the end range and just loading it, you know, so I can do an overhead squat or I can do it with a barbell in hand and getting to depth as well. And so un unfortunately, <laughs> it kind of depends what activity you're about to do. Is it going to be something like refereeing in a rugby match or is it going to be strength training? Um, but really, um, okay. yeah, we I want to go ahead. I do a lot of bodybuilders that like don't stretch, you know what I mean? So yeah yeah so that's that's because they're about to do you know a heavy strength training lift and we know that that static stretch so you know i'm here and i'm just holding for 20 seconds 30 seconds whatever that may actually um reduce maximal um muscle force and potentially torque and so we've kind of seen that and so really the the biggest evidence we had i mean there was a great systematic review in british journal of sports medicine a few years ago and stretching and injury prevention and really um, good balance. So balance and proprioception and uh, strong muscles reduced injury risk, whereas stretching didn't reduce injury significantly at all. And they looked at all types of stretching. And so, um, you know, you're in, if we're talking injury risk, your best thing is to do things like neuromuscular training. So that's things like that activate program or FIFA 11 plus and, you know, hitting the gym and doing that resistance training. Um, and that's really going to help you a lot more than standing there and holding, you know, one arm. Like it's, it's good to have, you know, flexible body part, flexible muscles. And, you know, that's good because it, you know, improves the viscosity of the tendon and makes it more compliant when a sport demands that kind of thing. Um, and that definitely helps, you know, post match a cool down, but it may actually be better if you just focus on balance and strength work. Yeah, balance. I, that was one thing that I, I started putting a lot of time into. Uh, after a few foot injuries, you really have no choice. Um, so we're going to... Yeah, right. We've been getting some questions. And um, Jenny Liu, hello there, Jenny Liu. She asked, Katie, can you give us an example of what a good pregame warm-up looks like? 
and how long should it be? Yeah. Like yeah. So I think it's going to depend, right? Again, going back to the it depends referee answer, right? So, um, you know, is this a 15th match or this is a seventh match? And it's going to be the same for our coaches and players, right? So, you know, is this a seventh tournament and I'm back to back? So really I have 10 minutes between matches or I have a full hour or it's a 15th match on Saturday and I'm driving. And so, you know, for me and, you know, your mileage may vary. Everyone kind of has, is going to have that one thing for them that they really need to warm up, you know? So like I have a meniscus issue right now. So like, I know that I need to make sure that I'm there early enough so that I can tape and mobilize that joint for me, but really, so 15th, you know, I like to be there an hour early it doesn't mean I'm moving a full hour. No, absolutely not. You know, it's, you know, I'm scoping out the field. I'm mentally preparing myself so that I'm there for the game. And really that warm is just going to be rugby specific, right? So I'm not doing static stretching. I'm going to be doing dynamic movements right. and moving all of the joints through that range of motion. And these are going to be the joints that I'm going to be moving during the match. So, you know, I like to include my dynamic and my field check kind of two in one and kind of do it across the field, see it, check the field. Is there a pothole there? Is there a sprinkler head we need to worry about? Things like that. And then, um, you know, with seven, the weather is going to be a factor too. You know, um, Sharon Moscovich is uh, the uh, S&C coach for rugby wheelchair. And she always has this issue with her players. Is She's like, all right, we need to warm up. And they're like, yeah, we're warm. Because um, a lot of people who are, you know, paraplegic or quadriplegic lack um, thermal regulation. So they're just hot, you know, their body's just warm. And so there's a big difference between it's hot out because it's 90 degrees <laughs> and actually physically being warmed up. Right. Oh. And so just because it's hot, you're not warm. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Because I, I actually got another question from Pascal O'Reilly ask, what's an ideal warm up for running the Bronco in really cold weather? Oh, nice. Been there, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately been there. Um, so I think, you know, some things to actually consider. Um, I would actually recommend wearing like a neck gaiter if you're actually going to do it in the cold. And the reason I say that is, um, so I, I come from a CrossFit background, so I call it having a Fran chest. Fran is just a tough, quick, short, go hard as you can workout. And every time I finish it, I just feel like my lungs hurt, my chest hurt, and I'm wheezing. Right. And so like, we've all probably had that um, when you're running in the cold weather, you kind of feel like your lungs hurt, it hurts to breathe, or you're kind of coughing after, um, especially something like the Bronco, where you kind of have to really pick up that speed and sprint. Um, the reason that happens is because we're breathing in so much so quickly that our body doesn't have enough time to uh, humidify the air by the time it reaches our lungs. And so that's kind of why we get that tightness and that coffee feeling. So you know, just like a wind guard might even help you. I know it might feel irritable, um, but might be worth a try. But honestly, if you think you've done a long enough warm up, you probably didn't. <laughs> so you should be sweating by the time that you're ready to do, run that Bronco. You know, you figure, you know, how long it's going to take, but you got to figure it's going to be hard. So you almost want to, um, the, the example I'm going to give is look at someone like you, Sam He's running a hundred meter dash, right? That takes him less than 10 seconds. Is he doing a 10 second warm up? Absolutely not. He's warming up for 30, 40 minutes getting ready. So he's mobilizing all those joints to the range of motion. And so, you know, this may be a 20 minute warm up for you and, and maybe more if, some, if something feels really tight or you're not able to get your heart rate up, but you just want to make sure that you're in a good enough position that you don't start and feel like you just wrecked the car because you're not warmed up enough and your heart rate wasn't jacked up yet. Right. So we don't want our first sprint to be during the game. Fair, right? Correct. And we want to get our heart rate up and down before the game starts. Pretty much. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like you don't want to be coming out for that first, uh, first whistle, oh, puffing no. winds and put hands on your knees. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't want to run a 5k before you run a 5k, but you should probably definitely cover some good meters. Okay. All right. And uh, one last question from Chris Carvo says what's the best way to improve game endurance and so maybe he means just like conditioning like match yeah. fitness. there's no fitness like match fitness but building endurance he wants to know how you can build endurance basically yeah so you know rugby's great right it's a game of just 
repeated intervals. And, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of standing. There's a lot of walking and jogging. Um, but you figure, really, it is a sprint and a stop and a sprint and a stop and a sprint and a stop. And so that's definitely your anaerobic system. So that's, you know, the short, powerful burst. That's, you know, running the 200-meter run. That's running the 100-meter dash or, you know, 22s and backs or, you know, 40 or 20, 40, 60s, you know, rugby drill. But then that aerobic system is going to be there to help you recover in between those bouts, right? It's 80 minutes of running or in moving around. So, you know, your best bet is having that strong aerobic base, but being able to push that lactic threshold with that anaerobic system. And so what I like to really recommend for people is doing anaerobic intervals paired with an aerobic component and flipping it too. So getting your body used to doing something aerobic. So I'm on the rower, I'm on the bike for 10 minutes, nice constant, maybe we're at 70%, 65%, and then going right into some anaerobic intervals. So we're going two minutes hard with a 10 second rest or something. So now we're talking 85, 90%. Getting to know your body and knowing what that feels like too, is just going to be mentally really good so that you can be at a point in a match where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm at my limit (laughs) or, uh, oh my gosh, this is great. But, um, being able to really just control that, you know, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system and knowing like, okay, we've got to line up. Let's lower my heart rate. I can control this. I can control my breathing. So really having that strong aerobic foundation. So we're, we're doing long aerobic. It's boring, right? Nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to go for a 30, 40 minute run, right? That's boring. That takes mental toughness but you need that aerobic base so that you can recover from these anaerobic sprint bouts. And then on top of that, obviously for that game fitness is pushing that lactic threshold. So we're training those anaerobic sprints. We're doing those intervals, whether it's on the bike, the rower, honestly running is going to be the best because it's sports specific. Um, Yeah. So it's, it's, it's going to hurt is the reality, right? (laughs) We need to push our limits to grow. And, um, you know, I commend those individuals who can do it and train on their own and do that. Uh, But there's also a reason that the best paid athletes in the world have a coach. And, you know, maybe that's a great opportunity to work with your ref coach and say, hey, can you come work out with me? Or, hey, is there another ref in the union that can work out socially distance with me? Or can, you know, you be my, uh, my fitness mate and check in with me? You know, hey, did you do your workout? Hey, what did you do? And and how are you measuring this? Like, you know, that you're actually getting faster, better or pushing that threshold and you know someone mentioned the bronco earlier that's a great measure of referee specific rugby specific fitness and so are you retesting that do you know that you're getting better or you just feel better and that's okay too cool all right well um katie speaking of coaching i think i forgot to tell everyone that you certify coaches across the country for the usa rugby level one coaching strength and conditioning course yeah, I do S and C and I do referee and every now and then too. Cool. Well, thank you for uh, educating our coaches and whatnot. And thank you for, you know, just your time tonight. It really, uh, it's enlightening and uh, hopefully everybody got a little bit of something out of it. Uh, so. Yeah. Always happy to talk rugby, refereeing and fitness. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to have our little drawing now. You can stick around for it if you want to. Uh, but Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. Let's see the winners. All right, so lads, um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> Sharing screen. Okay, hope everyone at home can see that. So these are the entries for the club. And the club winner tonight is going to get, uh, these are just tests, they weren't thrown out. Oh, they're still in there. Um, but the winner of the club tonight is going to get a bag of balls, a bag of Gilbert balls. So um, here we go. Yay, Matthew Polowitz, uh just send an email to uh, fitrefraffle at gmail.com and we will uh, sort out sending you the balls. Um, this is the social. I kind of want to save them for last. Okay, here's a high performance. Uh, we had 183 entries for the high performance workouts. 
Let's see who wins the Stars and Stripes signed jersey by the women's national team. Here's Mara. Hey there, buddy, you won yourself a jersey. All right, so going through the social folks, we had 85 entries this week. See who's gonna win this World Rugby Referee jersey. Mark Kubinski, awesome. I hope I'm saying everyone's name correctly. Uh, so with that, um, what we're gonna stop share. So anyways, um, congratulations to the winners. Like I said, send an email to Fit Ref Raffle. Um, next week, we're going to be talking to uh, former Eagle Irene Gardner. She's a, a nutrition expert person. It's also going to be on Valentine's Day. So next week we'll be starting on Sundays at seven. We'll be around for all of that. So um, remember, uh, this was from the um, referee development working group. Yeah. And uh, again, I want to acknowledge USA Rugby for giving us this platform and providing the swag for the prizes. So before I go, I wrote a song and I want to play it for you. So, um, after this will be done, but it's worth it. I really enjoy writing. Hope you're enjoying the Fit Ref Raffle. We're one big happy ref team. Well, COVID took our rugby and no one could travel, but we'll return to play with a vaccine. Warm up with good intentions. You're the best version of you. Stretch and cool down when you're down. You could keep it light or let your sweat shine bright. Just go have fun. Yay. All right, lads, we'll see you next week.